guys, it's me, Stormy, and today I have just got a whole snack and a whole treat for you. I've invited a friend over to my cyber house. <laughs> Miss Shireen is here. We're going to talk about this Jupiter-Pluto conjunction that's happening today, and this is a big deal. This is a big three-part deal that we're going to get to experience, but we want to talk about what is it? What does it mean? What is it feel like for us and then before we get out of this video we're going to tell you a little bit about how you can make the most of the use of this energy because that's what we want we want to learn we want to know what it's about and then we want some strategy to apply to our lives pretty much immediately so thank you so much for being here shireen all the way from india like she's making time for us from india <laughs> beautiful oh so, it's my yay. pleasure Yay, I'm Yay. so happy to have you. And um, yeah, can you just tell us just quickly, like, tell us about you just quickly. Yay. Sure. So, um, well, I'm an interesting mix, I guess, of like West, East and West, because I studied uh, pretty traditional clinical psychology, but then I got really interested in Carl Jung's work. So I pursued my advanced um, uh, post postgraduate work to become a Jungian analyst and then from there I ended up spending like the last 20 years coming to India once a year so here I am in India like my real spiritual home so I kind of and I love astrology so I guess I'm a I blend the western mystery school schools that I love in healing arts with um you know all my time spent in India and a lot of the um the, the philosophy I've learned here and um and even some of the Vedic astrology that I've been learning, like I haven't been officially studying, but just spending so much time in India, like it's, that's the other language. So it almost feels like, you know, when you have children that have two languages, you know, because like one parent is from one background, you know, like they, they're speaking two different languages. I kind of feel like that. I have like the two sides of me. It must be my Gemini descendant, the double. So like my inner marriage is like I'm half East, half West or something. <laughs> But that is yeah. interesting because it brings two, it joins them, it unions them in, in what we can see and explain all over the world, right? Well, I love, I really love to bring them together because they both have so many um, gems to share. Like, and it's kind of perfect for the theme of today because Jupiter is all about different, Jupiter's the planet that really rules all the different wisdom schools, right? And traditions and religions and languages. And so, um, since Jupiter is so amplified right now, I think it's a great time to talk about Jupiter things. So yeah, it definitely makes sense we would be talking about that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's interesting because in India, they also consider Jupiter, the, they call Jupiter the, the guru mm -hmm. planet. It's called guru, actually. So it's the, the planet that removes the darkness. Guru actually means removing darkness. Mm. So Jupiter is a planet that removes the darkness. So um, he's a little bit slammed right now, as you know, because he's really close to Pluto, which is quite intense. Pluto is the god of the underworld. So that's kind of an interesting dynamic. And then also he's, after he crosses Pluto, he's getting closer to Mars and Saturn. Of course, in Western, you know, in tropical, he won't be in the same sign as um, Mars or Saturn, and he won't be in the same sign as Saturn until the end of this year, right. which will be a big deal. But this is kind of the prelude, I think, to that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think even, even if we look back to just track our year, we look back to January and we had a course reset. I mean, we, we, we had everybody in conjunction, Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, they all, Mercury was in there. Major. Making, yeah. Making, you know, conversation as well with Chiron. So at a global level, as well as personal levels, we've had this, this, we've got to go back to what has not been set correctly and, and do a reset, do a deepening for sure. So as we yeah. come into it today, I feel like even though Jupiter is considered to be in fall in the energy of Capricorn, so not his strongest placement, not the strongest um, presentation, he's powerful here because he's saying, look, here's the wisdom that we've learned and we need to bridge that with a death so that we can lift the dark and come into something new. And I think that happens personally and globally, you know? 
Yes. Yeah, we're all being asked to wake up like we were talking before we started filming that Pluto, since Jupiter is making contact with Pluto, Pluto is the archetype of the judgment card in the tarot, like the judgment day awakening. And that's been a prominent archetype this whole year because we're in 2020. It's like double judgment because 20 is the number of Pluto in the, in the tarot. So the judgment card is the 20th major arcana. So we're in the year of double judgment. So it's like, wake up, wake up, wake up. And um, it's really a big awakening. Like I was sharing with you too, like my teacher tonight, she rarely references astrology. And tonight she was like, there's a very intense planetary combination that happened today. Be extra cautious and alert for the next 24 hours. It's very intense. So just that's the, uh, the humble request is just to be extra cautious and alert. So I'm glad we're doing this because not to, and this is no fear. This is just no fear. awareness. So fear is the virus of the mind, my teacher says. So it's not about fear, but awareness is important. So if you don't have to go out, in the next 24 hours, don't. <laughs> Stay home, pray, meditate, do some introspection, just pray for the world. It's a good time. Jupiter likes the intense spiritual work and the, and the prayers, and it's a great opportunity for all of us to awakening, awaken, no matter what your practice is, what your faith is. It's not a religious thing. It's just a coming together for the sake of healing this um, pandemic because we want to pray that this disease is stopped that it comes to a halt that it's contained and the more people that come together to pray for that set that intention to envision that um it's very powerful you know like strength in numbers so uh actually tomorrow night here in india they're doing this at 9 p.m which would be i guess 8 30 a.m pacific time or 11 30 a.m eastern time for you guys tomorrow um, they're lighting lamps, like how I have the lamp in the background mm -hmm. lit, it's a ghee lamp, um, just to, to help um, offset what feels like a little bit of a dark planetary period. So um, there are always things we can do, you know, we can bring the light. The light never really is diminished. It's just a matter of like, often they say like when the darkness comes, it's an opportunity for us to really come into our light the most, right? That's when the stars come out, they say. Absolutely. In the dark, we can see the stars. Yeah, and in the dark, we're all pushed into the position to turn on our headlights, our third eyes. Yes. To say, oh, hold yes. on, let me, let me see what maybe can't be seen when there is light, right? Nobody uses their, like, the um, night vision goggles during the day, because that would make <laughs> sense, right? So you're, you're pulled into a cycle of being able to look at that. And um. So this is, this is a 13 year situation. We haven't really had to do this kind of, of deep work um, for, yeah. for just a little bit here. And I think that given uh, the way that it has all come together and we're pushed inside, it has forced us to just in a very material plane, Capricorn, reprioritize. What are the priorities yeah. here, right? Yeah. What truly matters, what are the roots? of what we're going through. And the thing I keep finding is that because we're still at this point on that Cancer Capricorn um, axis at this time, is that we're yeah. not necessarily looking for anything new. We're looking and exploring the depth of priorities that have already been there. We've just maybe had them covered a bit. And now we've got to go back to them. So I don't know what, what's your experience. It's just for me has not been, we have to create something brand new. It's that it's here. Let's uncover it and bring that jewel to the surface. Yeah. I feel like it's going back to old values that we've lost touch with, you know, old, you know, things like respecting elders, having compassion for uh, the teachers who have come before us, honoring our ancestors, you know, um, <laughs> tipping oh, over. Tipping <laughs> over. Yay. Pluto's like that. Pluto will invert you so you can see it a different way. <laughs> yeah, well, also, let's not forget, during this time, we also have the Mercury-Neptune conjunction happening simultaneously, so yes. that's pretty intense. The Mercury, it's my phone trying, I think I can unplug it now. It doesn't balance that well when it's charging there. It's better. Um, Mercury and Neptune were joined also yesterday, so they're still they're still pretty close together. Um, that's I think that can um, definitely um, 
bring a sense of deep surrender and make everything feel extra. I know a lot of people have been saying like the last couple of days feels like a dream. Does mm -hmm. it's like surreal? Like it's hard to know what day it is, what where we are. You kind of wake up like, am I awake? Am I dreaming? Have you felt that? Oh yes, absolutely. I'm like, life is that you? But you know, <laughs> continuing to to put my head where my hands are at still. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And needing extra sleep. I felt like I've needed a lot of extra sleep in the last couple of days. Absolutely. When, when I got up this morning, I described it because I was still tired, but I wasn't yeah. human tired. I was like getting deep, soulful sleep. And it's not yeah. that my spirit is not at rest or at peace. It was just this different kind of sleep that just felt like every piece of my being was resting. Yeah, it just needs that. It just needs a deep soul bone level sleep, I think, right now, because we're all feeling the pain of the world. I mean, this is serious. Like, we, we the compassion is waking up. Mm -hmm. Like, we can no longer think, like, what's happening is happening over there. It's not affecting us. Like, we're so in this together now. And... We're all like, this is unprecedented that we're all suffering in the world at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like everyone in the world is suffering Yes. at the same time, maybe different levels. Of course, I don't mean to diminish anyone's suffering saying we're all on the same level, but we're all, even if we're not experiencing it at that level ourselves in this moment, we're, we're feeling it because we are so interconnected. So we're processing it. Our psyches are registering that pain of what's happening. So people feel a little bit overwhelmed and sad and just like burst out into tears randomly. That's, mm -hmm. you know what, that's probably really more than okay. It's healthy because our bodies are holding a lot of energy universally right now. And um, mm -hmm. even I was talking to my tarot mentor who um, she usually spends most of her time she's from London but you know her family now she's resides in uh Egypt right by the pyramids but this all happened and she hasn't been able to get back to her to her home to her pyramids so she's devastated and she just but she'll just burst out into tears not just because of her own flight but she's just like she just feels the yeah. suffering and I understand that so I just I think it helps for people to realize like there's nothing wrong if you're just in pain and you're like, why am I in pain? Nothing's happening to me. I'm just in my house. I'm okay. I'm healthy, but we're feeling it. So it's okay. I think we have to have rituals to grieve right now. And especially since this virus is attacking the lungs. Mm -hmm. I think now Venus just went into Gemini. So I'm hoping this is, I don't know if this is too far fetched, but I was like, hmm, Venus is the nurse. She's in Gemini. Maybe she's coming to help heal the lungs now <laughs> since she rules the lungs. Yeah. So, but I think one of the ways to heal our lungs is grieving. So let yourself grieve, have grieving rituals right now. We're grieving the old way, even though a lot of us were like, we needed that old way to change. Doesn't mean it's not a death right. and we're not grieving. We still need to grieve. Absolutely. In order, I think it's, it's a critical piece of every stage of human development that we go through in order to, of course, go to the next thing. There is this kind of looking back to say, oh, well, this is what I've known. Because the fact is, is that the road forward is a bit unknown, right? In terms of what does it look like material and, and what is my role to show up in? Because if we pull this down, I think, just even to businesses and to what we're doing in those houses, right? I feel like it's this little bit of a journey for all of us to say, okay, now wait, what am I really being called to? And you may not fully resonate with it yet, right? That's the thing about the change is that maybe you don't resonate with it yet, but it's exactly where you need to be going. It's been kind of whispering back here for a little bit. So it's like, even in that though, we have to go, well, wait, but everything I know is here. And, and how, do, how do I transition to this thing? Which is the other part of like, I think, it's beautiful that to start their conjunction, they're both direct. Both Pluto and Jupiter today are direct. And they say, yep, come forward. Come forward with me. And then we'll review it. You know, when we get to June, we'll say, well, what did you learn? What did you see? What did you feel? Because by then, we're going to start a forward motion of expansion, maybe even back in our world. And like our friend there in Egypt, we're never going to go back to the same house. So we'll have to review the progress that we've made and then we'll end the year seeing this come to culmination. But this is a stage, I think, 
this is a moment for the next 13 years for us. So today's decisions don't have to be huge, but it does need to be a little bit of a step forward. This is a superpower day, I feel like. Yes. So, and, and it's, it's a superpower. It's, it's really like, it's an awakening. Like just think, how are you awakening and how can you be so alert to everything? Because the, the new paradigm is living in the moment. That's very clear. Mm -hmm. that, that is the new paradigm. Like Eckhart Tolle called it out way in advance but now it's it's no longer a concept of be here now or be present it's like that's that's the only way we're going to survive this is we've got to be in the present we've got to do it moment by moment we can't really go too far into the future yeah. that will mislead us and we'll lose the power of the present moment so mm -hmm. we have to be really i think if nothing else that's what pluto and jupiter are asking us to be use our wisdom in the present moment like if you're going through an awakening and maybe, you know, people look at the imagery on that judgment card with the people waking up out of the grave. It's uh, the angel, um, Gabriel, is the archangel in that card. Very powerful archangel awakening these souls who've been in a slumber. They're coming out of their graves, waking up. So we're all involved in a little bit of a deep slumber. We're waking up. And when you wake up, just like after any kind of really deep sleep, you have to it, it's like it's a process right so you have to reorient you know, just, <laughs> yeah, the reorient. Future. yeah just yeah. reorient to like what where am i who am i now we're kind of all in that i feel yeah well and then venus moving into this gemini energy i think it's beautiful to think about you know archangel gabriel as well because he's communication he brings information yeah. Right, and he brings it in many different forms. Venus here in Gemini is like, hold on, friends. What's the beauty of what we already know, and how can we learn it? Right? How can we learn to garden? Because what are we going to do when the bottom falls out of this United States economy? Right? What What's going to happen? Yeah. When money changes. Do you know how to garden? Do, do yeah. Oh, it's know? really that's a big one. The gardening. Yes. Yes. Do you know how to sustain? And if not, here you are. You're forced into your bubble learn learn the yeah we can do the research <laughs> right you can do it now so i think it's, it's super interesting there now one other point i want to make before we maybe give people some tips and get them back out into the world is because mercury and neptune are so close today and jupiter and pluto can expand things very quickly it can be quite rapid um one of the things i would just be mindful with people is no matter what the information is um be sure that it is credible right yes Back that's check. a good point. And, and i believe this even at the level of our spiritual teachers and practitioners and it's not that people are out there purposely being fake or something like that but do do you know an exaggerate know, right is there an exaggeration um not only that is that really your teacher or how are you just so trying to stay there because it's what you know, but your teacher is actually over here. And maybe what that feels like is I'm a little uncomfortable over here. Well, that's all right. Your vibration is being adjusted to resonate with who you're supposed to be transforming to. It doesn't mean you just slide in there and you're all cute and you're like, oh, I was meant to be here. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so credibility the truth, who's your real truth in your life, I think is very important to look around at. And that includes me too, right? Maybe you've been following me for years and I'm speaking a message you just can't connect to anymore. If that's the case, it's okay. I will introduce you to another teacher or put them in front of you or the universe will bring it. And those things are okay to transform as well. Be careful. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Let's get everybody out of here, but first, what do you think? Like maybe your top two ways people can really use this timing, especially in this next 24, 48 hours. What do we do with that? Well, I feel use it to really um, connect deeply with your own, like the teachings that do resonate with you. Like if you have certain books that you really love, um, or even there's videos like of teachers or teachings that you know really inspire you or wake you up. Um, look for those kind of things. Stay away from any kind of trashy stuff or things that'll bring you down. Mm -hmm. Look for mm -hmm. things that will support your priorities and your awakening. You know, like look for inspiration today. And being really mindful and alert, like I said, that I think since that came straight from my spiritual teacher who doesn't, like I said, she does not usually talk about astrology. So I'm taking that 
it quite seriously, um, that there's something about this where it's like, which would make sense because they're both quite uh, powerful energies. Yeah. So we want to be really in the moment so we don't miss something, you know. And, um, and to light candles but be of course careful about, since we're talking about being careful, <laughs> but you know, don't, don't leave open flames, but light candles, you know, like if it feels a little extra dark, you know, or you feel any fear, because sometimes Mercury and Neptune can conjure up people's imaginations for better or worse. So yeah. um, if you feel yourself kind of going into a fear zone, come out of that with like uplifting music or videos or teachings. I think that's really important and do your spiritual practices, whether that's yoga or breath work, or sound baths, or um, listening to Tibetan, Tibetan sound bowls, you know, people can put those, that music on, or those frequency, um, they have all those frequency healing videos that you can just listen to the different um, healing frequencies, I forgot what those are called, but they have those. You could, if you have affirmations that support you, um, whatever your teachers guides coaches gurus have given you as a method to help you stay in the light do those things um you know if it's safe for you to be in nature and you can stay far away from people that's probably nice too it's jupiter you know if you have access to it but just you know social distance um but mainly things that feel uplifting you know like what you would do to feed your soul and what you would do just keep everything what i would say is keep everything on a very high level like no junk food, you know, everything very, very high level today. Yeah. Keep the, yeah. keep the standards very high for yourself spiritually today. Yeah. Create. That's what Jupiter Pluto is asking. Mm -hmm. Create thing. There's a space outside of just our material plane Capricorn that is also guiding in the material plane. And it's almost like this idea, once you connect to the spirit, the other, the financial, the material, the emotional, the mental, can kind of click in and say, here's the guidance, you know? So use your information to nourish yourself. Nourish yourself well today. Eat well. Eat well with the information and the people that you let into your world. And also, it's kind of cool because we're a part of a thing. Right? Like we're a part of the yes. thing today, guys. <laughs> I yes. think that, that is is so neat. And we'll have these next handful of months for some contemplation and also some integration of what we're picking up today. But today is your day. This is your superpower day. Make a stamp, make a beginning today, even if it's a baby step towards what your transformation can look like. And if you are out there having the best time living your best life, check on others. You have a vibration yeah. that is needed to share, right? Venus is in Gemini. The way that we need to share affection is to speak it, communicate. communicate. <laughs> Yay. I love it. Okay. That's what we're doing. <laughs> That's what we're doing. And we came together in like, what, 16 hours? It was like, hey, do you want to do a thing like tomorrow? Uh, let's do it. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, I'm so glad we got to do it. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So thank you so much for, for coming to us. Thank I know so it's me. almost be quiet time over in India. So I know. You know. It's like sleep time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you guys feel free to check out Shereen's work. Check her out. Tap into this video. Thank share you. it. Like, like the video. Comment. Share. Subscribe. I love you all very, very, very much. And I will also be doing a look at Jupiter Pluto um, around your finances specifically coming up. So stay tuned. Stay well. And we'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Thanks,